In this video, we'll tackle a problem involving well-dead connections that are present in trust connections. Now from the figure shown down, we have the diagonals of a trust member wherein the tension member is made up of one angle 125mm by 25mm by 12.5mm. Now by the way, yung nasa figure is 75 and so this is probably also 75. Now here we are given the properties of the weld and also the properties of the diagonals. Now for the diagonal, this area is equivalent to 2974mm squared. And then for the welding capacity, we have a value of V which is 0.75 because this is involving shear. And then we have a thickness of 12.5. And then for the yielding of the gross section, our V is equal to 0.9. And then we are also given the centroid from this point up to the application of the load. So that will be 45.72. And then for the rupture on the net section, we have to use a fee of 0.75. And then the size of the weld is equal to 8mm. Now this is also the thickness of the weld. So this is, let's say, TW. And then we have FY equal to 345. This is for the angles as well as FU. Now here, we have to assume that the member is subjected to repeated stress variations making any connection eccentricity undesirable. And so here, we will not deal with torsional shearing stresses. And then for U, for the shear lag factor, we'll use 0.87. And then FU for the welds is equal to 485 MPa. And so for the first question, we have to determine the tensile capacity of the angular section. Now by the way, at Dita, we have a bit of a correction because what we have to use is the smallest value of PU, not PN. And so let's just change this. This is PU. And so we have the following formulas. We have PN equal to FY times AG and we also have PN is equal to FU times AE. And so for number 41, determine the tensile capacity of the angular section, we have PU equal to 0.6 FY AG and we also have 0.9 FYEG for LRFD. Now here, since it is not mentioned that we have to use ASD or LRFD, we'll automatically use LRFD. Kasi binigay kasi yung fee. And so, let's just copy this one. This is what we will use. So first, we have two values of PN. So we have PN equal to FY times AG. So this will be FY which is 345 multiplied by AG which is the area of the diagonal which is 2974. So this is 2974. And then we also have FU times AE. So our FU is 450. And then our effective area is 2974 multiplied by the shear lag factor which is U. And then here since it's mentioned that we have to use 0.87 we'll multiply this area by 0.87 and then uh, we can just automatically change this into PU and then let's compare both and so let's just move this for the yielding of the gross section we need to use 0.9 as our fee so here we have 0.9 and then for the rupture on the net section we need to use 0.75 so this is 0.75 and so we'll compare both and then we'll pick the lower value and so we have 0 0.9 times 345 times 2974 we can get uh, let's just divide this by 1000 to convert it into kn so this is divided by 1000 as well as this one so this is 923.43 and so diba and dito yan sa choices however if we'll check the other one we have 0 0.75 times 450 times 2974 multiplied by 0 0.87 divided by 1000 this is gonna give us 873.24 and so if you are to pick the lower value then it's clear na we'll be using this value and so this is going to be our answer and so this tensile capacity it will determine the value of this load because this is phi multiplied by pn and so this will now be equal to 873.24 kn and so next in determining the length of welding l2 we need to include here the equivalent shear force carried by the welds and so we have a force right here for this connection and also right here. Now we know the formula for the weld shear strength. We have, since we are going to use LRFD, that will be phi PN is equal to phi times FNW which is 0.6 FU multiplied by the effective area of the weld. And so this value is going to be phi multiplied by 0.6 FU and then multiplied by AWE which is 0.707 times the thickness times the length. So this is 0.707 multiplied by T multiplied by the length of the weld. And so this is the same for L2. And so let's just label this as L1 while the other one is L2. And so now to get L1 and L2, we can take moments about this point or this point depending on what we want to find. 
Now since for the first question we need to find L2, then we can take moments about L1. And so taking moments about L1 equal to 0, we have VPN multiplied by the moment arm which is 45.72. Now about L1, this will cause a counterclockwise moment. And so we'll just equate the counterclockwise moment with the clockwise moment. And so what's going to cause a clockwise moment about L1 is the shear force present in L2. And so this will be the force which is equivalent to this. So this is our fee for the welding connection is 0.75. So this is now 0.75 times 0.6 FU. So 0.6 times FU which is 485 for the welding. And then we have 0.707 times the thickness which is the size of the weld which is 8 mm. So this is 8. And then the length of the weld is equivalent to L2. So L2. And so we can now solve this value. Now this is because we already know the tensile capacity of the section. We know that it's equal to 873 kilonewtons. So if we'll change this into 873 and then we'll convert this back into newtons to make our units consistent. So times 1000 or 10 to the power of 3. We can now solve L2. So we have 873 times 1000 times the moment arm which is 45.72. This is equal to 0.75 times 0.6 times 485 times 0 0.707 times 8 times L2. And so solving L2, we have, uh, let me just check, we have 873. Now here, we haven't included yet the moment arm. And so considering this force, we have a moment arm of 125 going to L1. And so this is multiplied by 125. And so times 125, L2 will now become 258.5. 67. So L2 equals 258.67. So this is now approximately this value. Now if you want to get the exact value right here, you can use 873.24 kn as what we have taken here. So it will be exactly 258.74. And so let's just change this one. Let's put 0.24 and then our answer is exactly 258.74. And so now, to solve L1, we can just use this value, and then we can sum up vertical forces. Or we can also take moments about L2. To make our answer independent with the first question, let's just take moments. And so taking moments about L2 equal to 0, we have the tensile capacity which is 873.24, so 873.24 multiplied by the moment arm which is, uh, by the way, let's multiply this by 1000 and then we'll multiply this by the moment arm. Now the moment arm going to L2 is this distance which is 125 minus 45.72. So this is our moment arm. So 125 minus 45.72 and then this is equal to this force multiplied by the moment arm going to L2. So this is going to be 0.75 times 0.6 times Fu which is 485 multiplied by 8 multiplied by 0 0.707 times 8 times L1 and then multiplied by the moment arm going to L2. So the perpendicular distance from this point up to this point that will be 125 mm and so this is times 125. We can now solve L1 and so this will be 873.24 times 1000 multiplied by 125 minus 45.72 and then this is equal to 0 0.75 times 0 0.6 times 485 times 0 0.707 times 8 times L1 and then multiplied again by the moment arm which is 125 so times 125 L1 will now become 448.67 and so L1 is equal to 448.67 and then this is mm and so this is now our answer and so this is how you're going to tackle this type of problem so always check first the tensile capacity always check the lowest value and then for L1 and L2 you can take moments about the opposite point of the length you are looking for